So you hate running? Me too. But I see all my friends going out to get runs and I want to join them because they look like they're having all the fun in the world. So despite me hating running, I still go out and get my runs. So stick with me and I'll walk you through the 10 tips that make me go out for a run despite not wanting to. Step one, watch your face. So thing number one is your kit. You really want to nail in your kit and make sure that it's the right size and it's comforting and supporting where it needs to be. Going out on a run in an uncomfortable kit can really make the run harder than it needs to be. And plus, you can never have too many running clothes. Experiment with different stuff. You never know what shoes or clothes you're going to enjoy until you try it out for yourself. If you get injured or sore, it's no fun. So, it's worth doing a gait analysis to see one, what type of runner you are and two, if you need any specialised kit. Thing number two, varying your runs. So when I first started running, I would literally run 2K, 2K, and then 1K, because I couldn't complete a 5K in a single go. And that really quickly got very, very boring for me because all I was doing was 5K runs as fast as I could every single time. It was only after I discovered different types of runs, so things like intervals, track sessions, or even trail runs, that running really became an adventure for me. And not only that, I started to enjoy it a lot more, and therefore my progress went through the roof. Tip number three is following a plan. A lot of the times we get so much options in what type of run we want to do that the parent of choice overwhelms us and we end up choosing none of it at all. Following a plan really takes the guesswork out of running and makes sure that you don't have to worry about all the other things. You can just focus on doing your run every single time you see that run pop up on your plan. Without a plan, it can be difficult to know when to rest. A lot of the times your brain is playing tricks on you and convincing you to rest when you know you have more in you. Getting a coach or following a plan can force you to go out on the runs when you do need to run and give you the rest that is needed. However, be mindful that any sort of pain outside of these plans can cause injury, so respond accordingly. Tip number four is one of my absolute favorites. Whenever I don't feel like going for a run, I always think to myself, what am I going to feel like after this run is done? And it's normally a very positive feeling. The only run you regret is the one you don't go on. Every single time you get over the mental barrier and go out for a run, despite that resistance, you become a stronger person, not only physically, but mentally as well. The next point is a trick I use constantly to beat that mental resistance, and that is to implement a two minute gateway habit. What this is designed to do is reduce the barrier of entry to any act so you can repeat it enough times so it becomes an unconscious practice. Think of brushing your teeth or tying your laces. You don't think about these acts. So how does a gateway habit work? A gateway habit is something that can be done in under two minutes that will cascade into a domino effect of more good habits. For me, my gateway habit is getting into my kit. Once you're in your running kit, it becomes infinitely easier to convince yourself to get out of the house. However, if you are still struggling, try the next tip. If you're in your kit and you still can't convince yourself to go out for a run, then just go out for a walk. It's absolutely fine. Don't put any pressure on yourself to hit a time or do any sort of distance. If you're going out for a walk and you start feeling like you want to run, happy days, you're in a run. If not, then a win is a win. You've got yourself in your kit and you've ingrained a habit of once you put your kit on, you are outside and you're ready to go do some exercise. Tip number seven is what is going on inside these headphones of yours. You can do something known as habit stacking, which is pairing a habit that you already do with something that you don't want to do. Things like listening to music or having a conversation with your friends are all things we already want to do and probably do do. So why not stack these habits with something that we don't want to do to try and incentivize it a little bit more. So going out for a run is something we don't want to do. Talking with friends is something we do want to do. Pair the two together and only talk to your friends on the phone when you're out on a run. And if you have no friends to talk to, then why not listen to a podcast? If you don't know which podcast you want to listen to, why not have me, Sarah or Andy in your ears and you listen to the Running Channel podcast. Thing number eight is if you don't want to listen to music or a podcast, then why not shout a friend and ask them to come and join you for the run? If you don't want to join with just one friend, join a group of friends or a run club and you can go out for a run together. Shall we? Let's go. <laughs> Beyond running with a single friend, why not join a run club? There are so many that you can choose from where a whole community of people will be running alongside you, giving you a sense of belonging. Rather than being accountable to just yourself, you are now accountable to dozens of other people. And it's a great way to meet new people and make lifelong friends and done why not sign up for a race signing up for a race is one of the best ways to get you going when you don't have the motivation to signing up for something that has an immovable date means you do have to go out and get those trainings if you want to enjoy race day publicly stating that we've signed up for a race can ensure that other people are holding us accountable as well as we can hold ourselves accountable it gives us an end goal and it gives us a strong reason why speaking of reasons why that is exactly my next point 
Thing number 10 is trying to find your reason why. Every single one of you will have a different reason as to why you want to go out and run. Whether that's to be fitter, to lose weight, to socialise or to go out and enjoy some fresh air. But whatever your reason, you've got to make it personal and you've got to make it powerful because it has to be stronger than your reasons why not to. Speaking of why, why don't you like this video and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And let us know down below in the comments what are your reasons to why you go out for a run and if you have any tips and tricks to help you go out when you don't feel like running. And if you need some race inspo then make sure you check out this video where Anna is taking on New York Marathon.